Have you guys seen that new Bilstein remote reservoir? The thing's nasty. What's up guys, Isaac here with Trails and Trucks and today we're gonna surprise my dad. This is his truck with a brand new suspension. I got my buddy Mike here, roped him into helping me. So hopefully we're gonna be able to knock this out pretty quick. This thing came straight from South Dakota where they use plenty of salt on their roads. So there is not a speck of rust underneath this thing. We are gonna get it done in an hour tops. We'll go with it. <laughs> Forward. This is a must do mod for your toilet. Seriously. Look at that. Oh, yeah. See, there's a little hook. Oh. And Mike's just going to wing it himself. <laughs> Easy peasy after you get that sway bar like off. <laughs> There we go. Hey. So I wanted to touch a little bit on why we're swapping the suspension out. So first things first, uh, the suspension that was on the rear of this truck, which is what we're talking about quick, uh, was still the stock TRD Pro Bilstein suspension. Uh, so this has well over 70,000 miles on it, tons of off-roading time, tons of on-road on time. So uh, it was well overdue to swap these out. As you can see, they're also very corroded, rusty, uh, there's not a ton left of them and it didn't help that they were a bit too stiff. When we lifted this truck originally a few years ago, we put a stiffer rear coil in and that didn't really solve the issue. It just was kind of a rough ride, especially since there's not a ton of weight on this truck. Like all we've done is rock sliders, skids in a rack, and there's no tent. There's not a ton of overland stuff on this. So the solution was we not, we not only wanted to swap this all out, we wanted to upgrade, get something a little bit better. Um, or a lot better. So we went with Dobbinson's IMS. Um, it's a 2.0, really a 2.2 inch body um, in internal, so it's a super good shock. We've ran it before and we're pumped on it. Um, and then we're also running the rear Dobbinson spring, as you can see, brand new. We want the best for my dad's truck, so you know we're, we're clearly going with some of the best out there. Um, and then we, we got it uh, powder coated red to kind of match that TRD Pro um, kind of OEM plus feel. Um, so yeah, pumped to get this new stuff on and excited to hit the trail with it. Kenzie, do you have red nail polish? <laughs> so she always comes when I hear. Do you have red nail polish? No. no. You don't? I don't think so. Stop. You really don't? I figured you'd have red nail polish. I mean, do you have pink, maroon, freaking burgundy? <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> All right, so uh, there's a little nick in the powder coat here, so we're gonna add some red nail polish to it. Hold on, let me get these gloves off. Make it a little easier. Yeah, you can, you can see the nick right here. We're just gonna use the nail polish to help seal that up and really protect the powder coat. All right, so we just finished ripping off all the old stuff. We're gonna slap on a new shock. We went with Dobinson's IMS. Um, it's a great shock, we're pumped about it. We've ran it on some of our other projects and other builds. So that's really the last piece to this puzzle for the rear end, is mounting this IMS up, so. We're all the way down. Okay, now you can go ahead and go up. Yep. All right, so get this, we had to replace, we didn't have to, but it's a smart thing to do. Replace the two lower rear shock bolts and the two front coilover bolts. We went to Toyota to buy OEM and for four bolts, a couple of nuts and some washers, 60 bucks, 60 bucks. Oh God, oh God. <laughs> Bank on it? Yeah. Oh, the 
These are like, these are like kidnap a neighborhood child zip ties, dude. <laughs> So since this forerunner came from South Dakota, they use a ton of salt on the roads. So I'm using some PB Blaster to just try and start soaking some of these rusted up bolts and nuts to try to make our life at least a little bit easier. I can get you a ratcheting one. No, this will work, this will work. All right, I'm just making some space in here. I'm moving what I'm assuming is either a brake or an ABS line. It's just a 12 mil, 12 mil uh, bolt. Yeah, no, it's not a swivel. I want to pull the truck off. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do. Sometimes with getting these stubborn ball joints out, instead of hitting the actual threads or the, the bolt, hitting the side will do just as good of a job. There it goes. I started to think I didn't know what I was talking about. There's a couple of obstacles in your way. There's like a little rubber piece back here um, and there's a clip in the way. So I've just been kind of working the head of the bolt past those and trying to keep this washer as close to the upper control arm as I can. The upper control arm. All right. Billet upper control arms from Dobinson's. Comes in this real nice, laser cutout foam thing. <laughs> it's like super overkill, but it's real nice. I mean, look at that. Are you kidding me? OEM, which have held up, but we're replacing with these new billets and I'm pumped. All right, so I'm no upper control arm expert, but I know it was time to swap out these upper control arms. So we went with Dobinson's billet aluminum uppers. They offer more adjustability, they're more durable, and they're specifically designed not only for their suspension, but for suspension lifts. So, uh, pumped to get these things on. Bonus material, okay, you get a sticker. So we're gonna slap that on when we're all done. This part's pretty tough. Uh, we gotta get the existing long bolt back through the upper control arm. So what I've kind of done is tried to place it as far into the engine bay as I can so that I can get this control arm into place. <laughs> I can get this control arm into place and then, you know, as easily as possible, slide that big long bolt back through the two holes and get this thing secured. Hey 
guys, it is the next day of our 24 hour forerunner project. We had to stop last night because we ran out of beers, uh, but we're back here early this morning, diet dues in hand, and we're ready to rumble and finish this project up. quickly talk about the rear of the suspension. Uh, clearly we're swapping this all out today. So we, we've taken off the old TRD Pro suspension, the Bilstein stuff, 70,000 plus miles on it, hard miles off-road, on-road. Um, so it was time to, to swap these out. And also these rear springs, when we initially lifted this truck a few years ago, we put a stiffer spring on which wasn't the solution. So we not only wanted to swap out the old stuff, but we wanted to swap it out with an upgraded solution. So that's why we went with Dobinson's IMS and also a Dobinson's rear coil. It's gonna be a bit of a softer ride, uh, a bit better for this truck so it doesn't have a ton of weight. Um, and absolutely pumped uh, to get this back in my dad's hands and for him to truly be able to notice the difference in the ride quality and off-road performance. Wow! Ah! Dude, do you wanna put one of these on your end? Would that make your life easy? Nice! It's the first spin that I noticed, yeah. Moving well, let me spray the other one right after this. <laughs> Alrighty, there we go. I hate South Dakota. <laughs> Alright, so we had to crank away at this sway bar end link to get this sway bar off so we could pull the old coil over out. So I gotta run to the auto parts store quick and buy a couple of new ones. So. Think of the suspension. and then they can use the gas pump. <laughs> All right, so we're revamping the suspension on my dad's 4Runner. That not only means springs, coils, things like that, but it also means bump stops. So out with this old stuff that doesn't really do all that much, especially with the lifted truck, you need taller bump stops. So these new ones are from Timberd Industries. Uh, these are taller, softer, they have a progressive spring rate, and they're going to help with that like harsh bottoming out when your axle comes in contact with your frame. Before you have this, it doesn't do anything. So this is like a total game changer and they're designed to go off-roading and again, help with this revamp process on my dad's suspension. Uh, no. oh, looks good. Yeah, just make sure. Is there a company that is all All right, so the front end took us a little bit longer than we thought it would. Uh, we definitely ran into some challenges with some rust with some really stubborn bolts. Uh, but the good news is the other side should go pretty easy because we already have the sway bar off completely. So everything should come out relatively smoothly. We'll see. All right, so we finally finished up the first corner of the front end. So we're putting the wheel on. We're gonna drop the car, back it out, Pull it back in so we can do the other side. All right, so we have 
the wheel off on the uh, driver front side now. We're gonna start loosening everything. Like I said, since we have that sway bar off, this should all go pretty quickly, and we're hoping to knock this out quickly this afternoon. So, my day job is I'm a pilot, and uh, airport identifiers start with a K, and then they have a three letter acronym for like the city or the town that the airport's in. And South Dakota's Rapid City's identifier is RAP, which makes that airport KRAP and full of crap. <laughs> We have everything else installed on the Forerunner. I'm just gonna button up the rear end and then we're gonna be ready to reveal the build to Isaac's dad. What about snapping it up, like the snaps? Why, why buttons? <laughs> they gotta be biased towards buttons. You know what, we're just buttoning it up, okay? <laughs> All right, so we just got the sway bar back in. Now we've got a juggle trying to get the links all reinstalled, but we're almost done with this thing. So see, what I don't understand is you got like five of these, right? Yeah. But none of these line up which means that even if I put it through here and back around, it doesn't, it doesn't fit. So the problem that we're running into is these are mislabeled. So FL, to the best of my knowledge, means fake left because this doesn't actually fit on the left side. Now, this doesn't either, which leads me to believe that FR actually stands for front rear. And then I have two that say A for aft. So, I don't actually know which one of these goes where, but hopefully we'll figure it out. I love my job. I love it. Honey, I love my job. God, I love that movie so much. All right. We're putting new inner fender liners in because the old ones are junk, and on the passenger side, one was completely ripped off, so... Like two nights ago, I was freaking out, and I was like, we need new inner fender liners. I wanted the ones from like, I think Arc Splash Guards is what we've used before, but they take forever to get here, so not forever, probably only a week. But these ones were Amazon special, super cheap, and they came overnight. It was like the 4 a.m. delivery option for like $1.99. So that's what we did. We just installed them, so now I guess we're gonna see how long they hold up and last, so. So we've been working very hard, fighting rust, fighting running out of beers, fighting time to get this job done. 
and I somehow lost one of the new sway bar link nuts and I cannot find it anywhere. I have no idea where it went. And we've been digging through buckets and buckets and buckets of old stuff. Can't find anything that fits. <laughs> this sucks. <laughs> Truck is off the lift, and we just finished the Dobinson suspension, timber and bump stops, new splash guards, some new end links, and other things like that that we replaced. I absolutely can't wait to show my dad. He flies in in like two, three hours, so I, I literally have to leave to go to the airport, pick him up. I'm sure, he's gonna be pumped. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.